This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. It is 5 o'clock here on your Friday. Good morning to you. I'm Lauren Casey. Here's what's making headlines on this April 24th. It's about the lives and the livelihood of the American people. Congress has passed a massive $484 billion stimulus package to help American workers and boost the economy. This morning, we're breaking down what it includes. And a Knightstown business owner giving back to their community how they're keeping other companies in business right now. Plus, a moving company stepping up to feed thousands of Hoosiers in need. We'll show you how they're working together with the Salvation Army and folks at Lucas Oil Stadium to make it all happen. But before we get to those top stories on your Friday, we got to get a check of our forecast. Todd Clausen is standing by from his home this morning. And Todd, after all the rain we had yesterday, can we get a dry Friday? We can get a dry Friday, just what the doctor ordered here, Lauren. And not only is it going to be dry, but temperatures will be back up and where they should be this time of year, and that's into the mid to upper 60s. Our normal highs should be right around 66. So what do you need to grab before you go for the day today? Well, grab the sunglasses. There may be times where you don't need them, and there's a little more in the way of cloud cover. It's not going to be a completely sunny day today. We'll kind of toggle back and forth between partly to mostly cloudy skies. You may need the light jacket this morning, but I don't think you'll need it later on this afternoon. And then sunscreen will be needed as well. Visibility is not terrible this morning, but they're in the process of dropping here a little bit as the skies clear. So I'll keep an eye on these for you. Just know that there could be some patchy fog out there, especially in western locations. Once you get just across the uh, state line into Illinois, there is a dense fog advisory. Otherwise, we'll see partly to mostly cloudy skies today. Temperatures right now, they sit in the 40s and 50s for us, so not terrible for this time of year. And temperatures, as I mentioned, earlier we'll be going back up into the mid to upper 60s almost everybody should be between about 65 and 70 degrees with those warmer temperatures being a little bit further south as you go so take advantage of today because lauren tomorrow more rain is in the forecast for your weekend we'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit all right get outside today and enjoy it todd thank you so much here's a live look right now at your commute this is south of downtown this is a major construction project we've been showing you all week long and that's because for northbound drivers at keystone avenue there's a major traffic shift over to the left, the southbound side, and then you'll shift back right to the regular northbound side of the interstate. So you'll need to take it slow as you head through that area because that is a pretty sharp turn right there as you have to shift to the other side of the interstate. The exit ramp, however, remains open. And then if you're heading southbound on 65 through this area, your lanes are just restricted and that exit ramp remains open as well. So something to keep in mind and also slow down as you head through this area to follow those lanes and watch for workers in the area. We do want to start things off on this Friday with the latest impact COVID-19 is having on your life and also our economy. More than 4.4 million people laid off and applied for unemployment benefits just in the past week. Roughly 26 million people have now filed for jobless aid in the five weeks since the coronavirus outbreak first began. About one in six Americans have now lost their jobs since mid-March. Now here are those specific numbers for the state of Indiana. This is from the Department of Workforce Development. In the week ending March 14th, just before all of this hit, the weekly claims numbers was about 2,500. Well, it jumped the following week to nearly 60,000 and then about 140,000 and 133,000. And it's been going down since. Last week's claims totaled about 75,000. Of course, we'll keep you updated. And we can tell you more help is on the way for small business owners. Last night, the U.S. House of Representatives passed a $484 billion package. Most of that money will go towards the Paycheck Protection Program. Loans from that program are meant to help small businesses keep workers on the payroll. The first round of funding ran out after just two weeks. This bill also includes money for hospitals and testing. President Trump is set to sign this deal into law today. Now to the latest information from the State Department of Health. The number of coronavirus cases and deaths is still increasing. This as the state plans to expand testing efforts. 706 deaths have been reported in the Hoosier State and they're blamed on COVID-19. More than 13,000 people have tested positive for the virus so far. More than 72,000 have been tested total. Starting next week, the Marion County Health Department and the City of Indianapolis will expand testing. The goal is to address racial disparities related to the virus. According to the Marion County Health officials, African American residents have been three times more likely than white residents to be diagnosed with COVID-19. And three more testing sites will 
open in high impact communities, starting with Eastern Star Church that's near 30th and Arlington. The test will be free, but you must make an appointment. If you develop symptoms, you can call 317-221-5515, or you can visit the marionhealth.org slash IndyCovid. There you can find out more information, and you can also go to our website to find information. That's the IndyChannel.com. Well, we can tell you RTV6 is keeping track of the ways that businesses are working to rebound from this pandemic while still keeping employees safe. For weeks, workplaces all across central Indiana have been sitting empty. And now a design firm is helping companies find ways to take precautions for our new normal. Shelly Lang Langona is the president of Indiana Market for RJE. RJE is among the businesses offering workspace solutions, doing everything from building floor plans to installing office furniture. Shelly says the time to start thinking about the new normal in offices, classrooms, even restaurants is right now. Those procedures, policy changes, product changes that you're going to do, those take time and that implementation process takes time. As an example, I can take this space made for four people, divide it, create a space for people feel comfortable. I can take this screen here, I can set it up. Now I've got a division between people, comes in different heights, comes in different sizes. Well, there are also new national guidelines to help companies navigate this uncharted territory. The National Safety Council recently lost, launched the Safe Actions for Employee Returns or Safer Task Force. The group provides best practices and other materials to protect workers. It's 506 as many small businesses are turning to federal loans to help keep them afloat during this time. One municipality is offering another option. Our Alyssa Donovan explains how a few local donors have come together in one Indiana town to ensure that smaller shops can stay afloat. Alyssa. Small businesses are what Knightstown is made of. So when the COVID-19 closures threatened the chance for some of these shops to reopen, some larger businesses stepped in to lend a hand. I um, love to bake. That love led Lauren Owen to take ownership of Ye Old Corner Bakery, which was already well known in Knightstown. So I started here on March 1st. March 16th was when the governor uh, started the stay at home order. So it has been uh, about a month and a half of a quite a learning curve. Like most small businesses, revenue took a dive, decreasing to about a third of what's typically brought in. You know, no one steps into a business saying, maybe there's going to be a global pandemic around the corner. That never really crossed anyone's mind when, I, when this was happening. Longtime business owners aren't doing much better. Well, it's mostly got me concerned and wondering about the future. Diana Eister's shop, Timeless Furnishings, had steady business for years until this. But right now, being closed, it's, you know, I'm not making anything. While things look grim for these small business owners, their worries have recently been lifted. A few of the larger businesses in town that were willing to uh, provide seed funding for the program and our COVID-19, we call it our business survival plan. Small businesses in Knightstown can apply for a loan through the business survival plan. It can be used to help with rent, utilities, or other payments. To just meet the basic needs and get them through the next few months. The safety net one Knightstown business owners are grateful for. However, they're not shocked it was offered. I think it's wonderful, but I'm not a bit surprised because that's how Knightstown is. It makes sense that a town of people that are just giving and kind would make this giving and kind gesture. We'll get through this together. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. The funds were provided by the owners of CFH Enterprises, a developer in the area, as well as the owners of Hoosier Feeder and Citizen State Bank. That seed money has grown to just over $15,000 to help support the businesses in Knightstown. I'm Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you so much. Right now at the IndyChannel.com slash rebound, you can find all of these stories, including job openings, where to find food assistance, and the answers to your questions about unemployment for the Department of Workforce Development. Again, that is all in one place for you at the IndyChannel.com slash rebound. Another major event is being impacted by the coronavirus pandemic. Yesterday, the Black Expo announcing the cancellation of the 2020 summer celebration. The decision applies to all public events, including free concerts, concerts, luncheon, and gala. The Circle City Classic Game and the parade in the fall are also canceled. This year's events would have marked 50 years of IBE serving the community. You know, with this being the 50th anniversary of the organization, I mean, we're, we're saddened by it. Um, 
And, you know, we're, you know, it is what it is. It's a pandemic that we, we really have to make sure that um, we're protecting the safety and the health and the well-being of our community as well, because that goes to the very mission and core of the organization. Well, you can find ticket refund information by clicking on this story. It is in the RTV6 app. Every day we see more people and more businesses stepping help during these unprecedented times. Working together, a local moving company is partnering with other organizations to help feed thousands of Hoosiers. Our Kelsey Anderson joins us live this morning with how they're making this work. Hey, Kelsey. Hey, good morning, Lauren. So it's all happening here at Lucas Oil. Volunteers packed 10,000 boxes of food that are now going to be dispersed across the state of Indiana. But now that that food is packed, the folks at Two Men in a Truck are helping to get the food where it needs to go. I spoke with Scott Hodgen, the marketing director for the company, and he says they aren't moving as many people right now, and they are glad that they can help. Now that the food is packed, the folks at Two Men in a Truck are helping to get the food where it needs to go. It's actually a statewide effort. We've got uh, basically every two men in a truck in the state uh, down here right now at Lucas Oil Stadium uh, moving boxes of food, about 10,000 boxes of food for the, the Salvation Army. Hodgen says not only does it feel good to help people in need, this is also helping to keep their employees on the payroll. Now, this effort to feed Hoosiers is being put on by the Salvation Army with the help of other community partners. Something Hodgen says the Salvation Army is great at doing is getting those community partners to rally around the state. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Oh, all right, thank you there, Kelsey. As you walk out the door here this morning, there's a little bit of patchy fog that's trying to develop across the area, but not a huge problem for us. And with many people not having to commute to work, it should not be an issue as once the sun comes up, we will burn any patchy fog off very, very quickly across the area. So your eyes and shine forecast for the next three hours keeps the temperatures in the upper 40s to right around 50 degrees with skies that right now, for the most part, are mostly cloudy. They're just now in the process of starting to clear out as you see on uh, storm team six radar with the satellite picture on it where the skies have cleared in illinois the fog has really settled in that's why i am anticipating a little bit of patchy fog to develop this morning once these skies continue to clear currently it's not that big of an issue but throughout the day today we'll kind of toggle back and forth between partly to mostly cloudy skies but look at those temperatures very seasonal for this time of year even with a little more in the way of cloud cover compared to earlier in the week when we were in the 60s and 70s highs today will range from right around 70 in Bloomington and Columbus to mid-60s to the north in Kokomo as well as Peru. Lauren. All right, Todd, thank you so much. While the FDA continues to deal with the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, scientists are still keeping an eye on oncology product development. Straight ahead, details on the new drug to help breast cancer patients. And this year's NFL draft looks a lot different. Coming up, how the league is adapting to social distancing rules. It's 513. Stick around. We'll be right back. American Idol, new Sunday on ABC. Welcome back. New this morning, the government is greenlighting a new drug to treat aggressive breast cancer. The FDA has approved Tradelvi. It's used to treat patients with triple negative breast cancer that has spread to other parts of the body. The drug is also being tested for other cancers, including bladder and lung. The new therapy is specifically for patients who have already tried at least two prior therapies. Well, doctors say there may be a new symptom of the coronavirus, a condition known as COVID toes. And we want to warn you, the photos you're about to see may be disturbing to some. Doctors treating COVID-19 patients say they're now noticing lesions on people's toes, specifically patients in their teens and 20s. One doctor at Northwestern Medicine says he's seen some images of more than two dozen cases of this condition. She says there needs to be more testing to see if the lesions are truly linked to the coronavirus, but also says it seems that it may be a coincidence during the pandemic. Grocery store shelves are starting to look more like they used to, and the CEO of one major chain says it's up to you to keep it that way. The head of Kroger says supply chains for most products have stabilized. You might still occasionally see shortages of high demand items, but those are short lived. Usually there's an alternative available. He says the key will be people only buying what they need and not hoarding those products when they're stocked. 
If you use the video conferencing app Zoom, you'll want to keep an eye out for an important update. The company is releasing updated software this week to address some of those privacy issues. Zoom has seen a huge uptick in traffic since social distancing measures began. Hackers tapped into that and they've been hijacking meetings and sharing inappropriate content. The security update will change default settings for meetings. Hosts will now have more control over who gets access and who can share the screen. Zoom CEO says they plan to have a complete security overhaul by the end of next month. Here at 518, we want to toss things over to Todd Clausen from home, who's looking at today's forecast. And Todd, do we have any visibility issues right now? You know, I think they're starting to settle into parts of central Indiana, Lauren. It's not terrible right now if you do have to walk out the door, if you're one of those essential people that need to get on the roadways uh, this morning. But we'll have to keep an eye on as these skies start to clear this morning, which will give us the sunshine this afternoon. These temperatures are cool enough that fog will settle in. There's a dense fog advisory in Illinois, but I'll draw your attention, even though there's no number there, right here as you make your way into the Frankfurt area and into Clinton County, uh, the fog has really started to settle in as again these skies start to clear. So something we'll definitely keep an eye on may become a little more of an issue for us as the morning goes on. But again, with the lack of people on the roadways here this morning, if you just hunker down, you don't have to get on the roads till a little bit later, you'll be just fine because once the sun does come up, which is fairly early now this time of year, uh, we will burn that fog off very, very quickly. 40s and 50s for temperatures this morning. Uh, not bad at all. 54 in Bedford, 44 in Crawfordsville, as well as Lafayette. Storm Team 6 radar is quiet. The rain from yesterday is now off to the east, which is good news for us. And you can see here with these clear skies, that's again where the fog has started to make its way into the area. So the more clearing we see as that moisture pulls off towards the east, that's when the visibilities will start to drop as far as rainfall. We kind of sandwich ourselves in a decent day between yesterday's rain and more rain that will be heading our way for tomorrow. Partly to mostly cloudy skies today, temperatures of Eventually into the mid to upper 60s for us. It's a mild day and it's a fine day today if you want to grill out with the family on this Friday evening as temperatures will be near 68 degrees at 4 p.m. then falling into the low 60s as we get into the 8 o'clock hour but we do remain dry. That changes tomorrow as we deal with showers and storms. 62 on Saturday, a little cooler on Sunday. Sunday we start off with some rain in the morning but then we will see uh, the sun come out in the afternoon. Saturday is the opposite, starts off dry, so the best time to get out and about tomorrow will be the first half of the day because in the afternoon and evening, here comes the rain across the area. Could be some pockets of moderate rainfall tomorrow as well and even a few thunderstorms and some of this rain will linger into Sunday morning before again it moves out by Sunday afternoon. And once that happens, we get into the sunshine. Monday's a good day, more showers and storms in the forecast for Tuesday with a high of 70 degrees and then showers Wednesday morning and then we have sunshine Wednesday afternoon and into Thursday. So you kind of get the picture here, Lauren, pretty active, a very typical spring-like pattern here as we deal with showers, we deal with sunshine. Overall, though, temperature's not bad, with the exception of Sunday. That'll be a little cool with highs in the upper 50s. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Let's take a look right now at your commute. This is I-70 near Sherman Drive here on the east side. You can see traffic here is quiet, and that's because crews are in the process right now of closing down the westbound lanes of I-70 on the east side between 465 and the north split. Everything, including the ramp systems, will be shut down by 6 a.m. this morning. The 30-day closure as NDOT works while more people are working from home. The eastbound lanes have already been closed for about two weeks now, and those will continue through mid-May. Of course, we'll keep you updated on those major project products projects rather that will impact your east side commute. Here at 521, the 2020 NFL draft kicked off last night and it was a draft like any other. The COVID-19 and social distancing guidelines took the draft virtual. Players, their families, NFL coaches and staffs all videoed in from around 60 different places across the country. And NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell hosted from his basement. Coming up in the next half hour, we're going to take a look at some of the highlights from that special night. RTV6 and ABC are your home for complete NFL draft coverage. Round two kicks off at 7 o'clock tonight. That's when the Colts are set to make their first picks. Saturday's coverage starts at noon. Again, you can watch that all right here on RTV6. The prey just kept getting bigger and bigger. So to me, it was probably the best birthday gift you could give them. 
And the coronavirus did not stop an Indiana family from celebrating a major milestone 100 years in the making. And now here at 530, Indiana University is using Marion County to learn more about the silent spreaders of COVID-19, what they're hoping to learn from a new study and how you can participate. Time right now is 522. Stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Grassroots parades have also become a popular way to wish our friends and our neighbors a happy birthday during this pandemic. And that's just what happened for one Seymour man celebrating a major milestone. Clifford Syrup would have celebrated his 100th birthday and at his favorite casino, followed by a week long celebration planned by his family. But instead, family, friends and first responders and also fellow veterans braved the rain to give Clifford a proper birthday jubilee. He says he was surprised by the gesture. Clifford also told us his secret to making it to 100 is hogs pudding, family, a good woman, and knowing the Lord. Amen to that, Todd. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I, I like that. I always like to hear what the people who make it to 100 say is the reason or the secret to it. And they always have the best answers, so good right. for them. They, they, well, they do. They, they have the experience, right? Yeah. And we probably all should take a, a little page from them. So happy birthday uh, to him. All right, outside. Right now, we're dealing with partly cloudy skies. They're in the process of clearing out. And as that happens, there could be a little bit of patchy fog that settles into the area. Uh, but that'll burn off once the sun comes up. And then we're looking at partly to mostly cloudy skies today. A decent day. All these temperatures, very seasonable for this time of year. 64 and about 67 in Indy, right around 70 degrees in southern locations. Take advantage. We'll talk about the changes heading our way for the weekend coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues. Time now is 527. Stay with us. We're back in just a couple minutes. Work weekdays from 6 to 10 a.m. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. More help is on the way for small businesses in America. Working for you, we're breaking down what's in the more than $480 trillion stimulus package set to be signed by President Trump today. As several small businesses continue to struggle across the state, one local company is giving back. How it's helping other business owners to prepare to rebound after the COVID-19 pandemic passes. But first, it is 5.30 before we get to our top stories. I want to thank you for joining us here on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. My friend Todd Clausen joining us right now from home. Todd, we finally made it through another work week. They seem to drag on and on these days. <laughs> and thankfully, you have some good news for us on this Friday. You know, you're right, Lauren. They do seem to get a little bit longer and longer the more uh, we have to stay at home. But hey, it's the place we have to be, so we'll get through it. And we had some decent weather earlier in the week to get you out and about throughout uh, the day for a little walk through the neighborhood. Yesterday, not so much the case. Today, uh, we're back into the sunshine and decent weather. Now, there's a little bit of patchy fog here this morning. And uh, I'll zoom in to get some of these numbers off the map for you. And you see the biggest issue here is in the Frankfurt area and then over towards Lafayette. Frankfurt down to only four tenths of a mile visibility. A little better in Lafayette over towards Petersburg, but that's where the skies are starting to clear. And that will be the trend now this morning. Once the skies clear, that's when the patchy dense fog is going to settle in. So it's kind of a race between the sun coming up, because once that happens, that'll help to burn the fog off and the fog now quickly settling in. 30 or 40s and 50s for your temperatures rather this morning. Highs eventually will climb into the mid to upper 60s. It turns into a decent day for Forest Lauren with skies that'll kind of toggle back and forth between partly to mostly cloudy, but the key, we remain dry from start to finish. All right, Todd, thanks so much. We want to get a look at traffic right now. This is I-65 and I-70 at the North Split. Now we do have a traffic alert for any drivers, especially those coming in and out of downtown on the east side. We know that crews are in the process right now of closing all the westbound lanes of I-70 between the North Split and 465 on the east side. Eastbound lanes in that same area already closed for major construction projects. Project. Those closures are both set to last 30 days. So the eastbound closure, that's been in effect for about two weeks or so now. So that will continue through the middle of May. This closure in the westbound lanes that goes into effect today should wrap up by the 24th of May. Of course, we'll keep you updated. Hopefully you can take some alternate routes and it won't be too busy with everyone staying at home. Well, Indiana is paying out a record amount of unemployment benefits to help Hoosiers rebound and get back on their feet. Starting today, gig workers, independent contractors, and the self-employed can 
start applying for those benefits through the Federal Care Act. Applicants who are approved will start seeing those benefits on May 8th. The average wait time is about 21 days. You can find out more information about unemployment resources on our website, theindychannel.com. For the fourth time since the coronavirus pandemic began, lawmakers have passed stimulus legislation to help the economy. The $484 billion is primarily earmarked for small businesses, but already there's some questions about is this enough? ABC's Alex Brochet has more from Washington. The House will be in order. In Washington, members of Congress back on Capitol Hill, wearing masks and gloves, lining up to vote in staggered groups to pass a new relief bill. It includes $310 billion to replenish the tapped out loan program for small businesses. Rahama Wright is hoping it will keep her beauty business afloat. My business has been tremendously impacted by COVID-19. That is, if she can get it this time. She applied for a loan in the last round. The funds ran out. But who did get money? Many bigger companies like Shake Shack, Ruth Chris Steakhouse, and Sweetgreen. With outrage growing, all three now returning the millions of dollars they were given. The bill comes as U.S. unemployment has gone from bad to worse. 26 million filings since the outbreak began, numbers not seen since the Depression era. But many states have processed only a fraction of their applications. In Florida, more than 90% of people seeking aid are still waiting for their first payment from the state. How many meals? Oh, five. Five? Five, okay. Massive lines at food banks from New Jersey to Texas. I've applied for unemployment, but um, it's taking a while, so just need the help. The latest bill does not include money for state governments. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell facing criticism after suggesting hard hit states, many of which are Democratic, should file for bankruptcy if they need financial aid. This is one of the really dumb ideas of all time. People died. 15,000 people died in New York. The president asked about that at the briefing. And we'll see what happens. In all fairness, John, some states have not done very well for many years, long before the virus came. Governor Cuomo going on to cite stats from the Rockefeller Institute, showing that New York State puts $116 billion more into the federal pot than it takes out. While Senator McConnell's state of Kentucky takes $148 billion more from the federal pot than it puts in. Alex Brashe, ABC News, Washington. We're seeing it over and over again during this crisis. Communities coming together to help each other make it through. One small town just east of Indy rallying together to ensure that those mom and pop shops can make it special, can make it and survive out this pandemic. Our Alyssa Donovan explains. If you drive through Knightstown, you'll notice it's dotted in small, locally owned businesses. These are staples in the community, and they're run by people who are proud to call Knightstown home. So when the stay-at-home order went into place and business came to a screeching halt, some of the larger businesses decided to help out the smaller ones. The streets are quiet in Knightstown today, but normally there's people walking in and out of these mom and pop shops. Businesses like Timeless Furnishings have flourished with steady business for years. And Ye Old Corner Bakery just under new ownership, weeks before the stay-at-home order went into place. With more than a month of little to no business, shops like these may not survive. But the people of Knightstown weren't going to let that happen. A few of the larger businesses in town that were willing to uh, provide seed funding for the program and our COVID-19, we call it our business survival plan. So we're helping small businesses to uh, just meet the basic needs, to uh, pay the rent or the mortgage, utilities, and get them through the next few months. The funds are coming from the owners of CFH Enterprises, a developer in the community, and owners of the company Hoosier Feeder, along with Citizen State Bank. Businesses can apply for the loans as needed. And the business owners we talked to said they were grateful for the loans. However, they weren't surprised, saying that's just how Knightstown is. It's a town full of people who want to help and support each other. I'm Alyssa Donovan, RTV6.
Great story there, Alyssa, out of Knightstown. Thank you so much. Indiana University researchers there leading a first-of-its-kind study to learn more about those silent spreaders of COVID-19. The IU School of Medicine is conducting a study. It's called Tactic here in Marion County to determine how widely the virus has been spread. The researchers are asking for your help. They need volunteers in the county who have not tested positive to have a test kit delivered to their home. Dr. James Wood is among those leading the study. He says that the results will also help determine when it's safe for the state to return to normal. Wood says this study is important because it includes kids and that's a demographic that hasn't been looked at in any of the other studies that are happening right now across the United States. As we talk about going back to school eventually and getting back to social activities, um, knowing how children are um, infected and carrying the virus is a really important step in that process. Age, location, race, and ethnicity will also be used in this study. So if you want to participate, you can find a link to this story on the RTV6 app and also at the IndyChannel.com. The Indiana State Department of Health has reported 45 new COVID-19 deaths. That brings the total in the state to 706. More than 200 of those are right here in Marion County. Since the pandemic began, more than 13,000 Hoosiers have tested positive for the virus. Well, every day we see more people and more businesses stepping up to help during these unprecedented times. Working together, a local moving company is helping to feed thousands of Hoosiers. Our Kelsey Anderson is joining us live this morning with how they're doing that. Hey, Kelsey. Hey, good morning. So business is obviously slow for moving companies like two men in a truck. And right now they're only doing necessary moves. So they're using that free time right now to feed Hoosiers across the entire state. And that's all happening right here at Lucas Oil. We're underneath Lucas Oil right now, and uh, that's what 10,000 boxes of food looks like. Scott Hodgen gave me a virtual tour of the work two men in a truck are doing alongside the Salvation Army. It's actually a statewide effort. We've got uh, basically every two men in a truck in the state uh, down here right now at Lucas Oil Stadium uh, moving boxes of food. Nearly 10,000 boxes of food will be making its way through the state. They're going to go to the different Salvation Army distribution centers and just boom, boom, you just start feeding people. Hodgin says it feels good to help right now and it just reiterates that they are Indiana's movers who care. This isn't a normal move. This is a move uh, to move people forward. Hodgin says he gives all the credit to the Salvation Army for this current campaign. He says it's something that they're known for and it's also something that they are also known for helping the Salvation Army with several campaigns throughout the year. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. All right, thank you, Kelsey. As you get out and about here throughout the course of the day today, we're going to be dealing with temperatures that are going to be pretty seasonable across the area. That is the good news. And the better news is that we are going to be completely dry across the area as well. So no rain chances today. Tomorrow, though, they really, really ramp up, especially as the day progresses. The morning hours are fairly dry. The afternoon and evening especially turns very wet. And then some of those rain chances will hold over into Sunday morning as well. But Sunday is not a bad day. It's the coolest day we have in our seven day planning forecast. Uh, but as we get into the afternoon hours, we should work the sunshine in and then Monday's a dry day. Highs today in the 60s to right around 70 degrees, very seasonable. So take advantage of today. We'll talk more about the timeline for that rain come tomorrow in Maine weather in just a few minutes. Lauren. Todd, thank you. Families around the world have been unable to hold those traditional funerals because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And that's left many unable to properly grieve. This morning, an Indiana woman who lost her mother to the virus is sharing her family's story. And the Indiana Department of Transportation is looking at how they're going to, is looking for new people and they're looking for you to apply. We'll have that story in Hiring Hoosiers coming up here after the break. This family, so I feed them blue. Well, COVID-19 has killed people worldwide and families have been unable to hold those traditional funerals around the world. Maria Wildbridge was unable to be at her mother's side. Maria works here with Marion County Prosecutor's Office as a Spanish translator in all major trials. One month ago, her mother died of COVID-19 alone in Spain. Luckily, she had visited Indiana weeks before that she was killed by the virus. Josefina Linares Mendez enjoyed the shops, the scenic views, and the seasonal charms of Nashville. It's what connected the matriarch from Madrid to Brown County. 
This was her second trip to Indiana in 20 years to visit her daughter, Maria. Maria is one of nine children, eight girls, one boy, born to Josefina and Miguel Romero. Mom, the seamstress, made the children's clothing. The family grew up in Madrid, where she had a big 80th birthday party in September. This past February, Josefina returned to Indiana to visit her grandson at Purdue and to take in Nashville as well. When the cancer survivor returned to Spain, COVID-19 would take her life. She died alone. She was cremated and honored in a private burial. The queen, la reina of her family, lives on in their memories and hearts. Her Hoosier family says they feel blessed by her last trip to Indiana, knowing their love and being together was the best place to be. Well, like many families, the goal is to one day have a celebration of life, and that was Rafael Sanchez with that report for us. The time right now is 547. We want to toss things over to Todd Clausen for a check of our Friday forecast. Hey, Todd. Hey, Lauren, how you doing this morning? We're off to a decent start as far as uh, the weather goes. Been watching these visibilities, and you notice these color contours here, which are gray. And where you see the gray, that's where the fog has really started to settle in. So as you work your way up towards the Lafayette area, into Frankfurt in the Clinton County area, that's where the fog has settled in. It's not so much an issue here in the metro area. And this fog is settling into the areas where the skies are in the process of clearing across the area. As the clouds break apart, we get the clear skies. The temperature's cool, and that's when this fog really starts to settle in. So it's not out of the question that it'll continue to expand across the area this morning. The good thing is, though, the sun comes up earlier this time of year, and so that's right around 6.30. And once the sun does come up, we'll start to burn it off very, very quickly. 40s and 50s for temperatures here this morning, but Storm Team 6 radar is completely quiet after yesterday's rain, which never got really all that heavy, but it stuck around for a good chunk of the day. So we need an opportunity here to dry out. We'll take our rain when we can get it, uh, but we need those dry days as well, especially with everybody wanting to get out of the house and uh, walk around just a little bit through the neighborhoods or some parks in your area, and we'll have a dry day today. That's the good news. There is some rain off to our west, but that really doesn't get in here until tomorrow. So with many people working from home, of course, and today if you want to take your work out to the patio in the backyard, uh, you'll be in decent shape here, and of course, while you're there, uh, maybe sneak off to the IndieChannel.com and check out all the great stories we have uh, there as well. Temperatures will be in the 40s, 50s, and eventually 60s here as we work our way throughout the day today with temperatures uh, nice and seasonable. We'll toggle back and forth between partly to mostly cloudy skies, uh, but again, it will be dry today. That changes for the day tomorrow as rain returns. The first half of tomorrow is dry. Most of the rainfall will be in the afternoon and evening across the area, and you see that coming in on TrueCast as it works its way in from south to north. There will be some pockets probably tomorrow of moderate to maybe some heavy rainfall at times. And don't be shocked maybe if you have a rumble of thunder in your neighborhood, although we are not expecting any severe weather tomorrow. Sunday, we have some showers in the morning. It's a sunny afternoon. It's the coolest day, though, in our extended forecast at 58 degrees. 63 on Monday with partly cloudy skies, more showers and storms, but 70, Lauren, as we work our way into to the day on Tuesday. All right, Todd, thank you so much. We can tell you the Indiana Department of Transportation is hosting a virtual career fair set for next Friday. NDOT is looking to fill more than 100 open positions, including those summer seasonal positions, the highway technicians, equipment mechanics, and construction engineers. The event will start at 10 a.m. next Thursday. No registration is required. For more information on how you apply to these jobs and other jobs, you can head over to hiringhoosiers.com right now. Companies post their job openings on the board every day to complete the link to the application process. You can also find other job source search resources there as well. That's all at hiringhoosiers.com. Some local businesses are facing an added challenge amid this pandemic. They opened right before everything shut down. Coming up, how the community is stepping up to help some new restaurants stay afloat. It's 550. We'll be right back. TV.com. 
Welcome back. There are a handful of restaurants in the area opening just before the state's stay at home order went into effect. This morning, Brad Brown shows us how one new restaurant in Carmel is using its local support to help others. The new Kalachi factory near 106th Street and Michigan Road opened on March 4th. Less than two weeks later, owner Lan Haywood had to make a quick pivot. We don't get as much walk-in traffic uh, with not as many people going to work. It's just not, the, the volume of business is just not there. Um, so we've really been able to adapt and come together as a team and it's really been good for us. But his crew has made the adjustments to stay open. Customers continue to turn out for these pillowy soft buns filled with anything from breakfast to lunch to fruity sweets. Kalachi is a Czechoslovakian originated dish. The original Kalachi was just fruit. One of those customers came from just up the road. Michael Dickerson works at Engage Financial Group. He's been gathering big lunch orders from coworkers and friends and supporting local restaurants. They're trying to hold on to their employees as long as they can. Um, and they need to pay their rent. They need to pay their utilities. They need business from people. One day a couple weeks ago, Michael made a stop for kolaches, a lot of kolaches, and he left a very generous tip for Lan and his staff. One, I like kolaches, um, but two, he had just opened, so you know if we could support him and keep him going. It's a pretty big order and it's good for us, um, but we're also able to build relationships, especially now since we're new, so that's great. Lan turned that tip into a gift card to pay it forward. This week, they donated several big boxes of baked goods to the staff and kids at the Indianapolis Children's Bureau. We're really looking to partner and be a part of the community and support those people who are on the front lines doing the hardest part of this work. A lot of the credit you know, goes right back to him. He's done a good job, a uh, good business owner. He's just trying to support people. A great example of opening wallets and opening hearts, working together in these tough times. My main goal for this was to see if I get a couple of people doing the same thing. Um, and, you know, a few people do the same thing for different businesses. Uh, that can make a big difference. I think that if we can weather this uh, opportunity, then we'll definitely be poised for a, a, a good future here. Working for you in Carmel, Brad Brown, RTV6. Brad, thank you. There are two other Kalachi factories locally. One's at 96th Street and Allisonville Road. There's also one at 116th Street and Guilford up in Carmel. Todd, <laughs> these stories every day. I could go for a Kalachi right now. They're so delicious. But we're just going to have to wait till the end of the show. They, they, they are delicious. I've been to the one that you mentioned there uh, on Allisonville Road, Lauren. So hopefully uh, that guy there on the west side uh, gets some good business here. And the support uh, continues there in the local community because they are really, really good. And all right outside right now, we're dealing with a little bit of patchy fog that's developed across the area. Temperatures in the 40s and 50s, but radar is completely quiet. Uh, that is the good news going forward throughout the day today. Partly cloudy skies, seasonal temperatures. We're up to about 67, 68 here in the city. Some locations to the south could get close to 70 degrees. More clouds will build late in the day. More rain arrives in the forecast tomorrow. We'll talk about that seven-day planning forecast and have your latest news headlines as well coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues right here on RTV6.